Dear learners, we shall take up Unit 9 of your Introduction to Organizational Behavior course. That is the first semester of MBA program. And uh, in this Unit 9, I am Professor Nipendra Dayan Sharma of the Munijan Dayan School of Management. We shall discuss about the Introduction to Organizational Behavior. That unit is already there in your SLM. Basically, in this unit, we have spelled out uh, some learning objectives. First of all, we need to be clear about what is organizational behavior, the definition of organizational behavior. Then we shall discuss some historical perspectives of organizational behavior. After discussing the historical perspective, we shall also discuss the approaches to organizational behavior. Needless to mention, we need to discuss about the importance of organizational behavior. We shall also discuss or the analytical framework for learning organizational behavior. It's a very important topic, organizational behavior. That how do we study organizational behavior? What is the analytical framework? That aspect also we need to discuss. Then since this is a unit of your first course, management process principles, we shall also have some kind of understanding about the relationship between management process and organizational behavior. Then we shall also discuss the relationship between human resource management and organizational behavior. Then we shall discuss the challenges in organizational behavior and how the globalization is having an effect on organizational behavior. Basically, these are some of the objectives based on which your SLM has been written and based on which we can have the overall understanding of organizational behavior as a concept. So dear learners, let us first take the, the first aspect of our learning objectives, introduction to organizational behavior. We all know what the organizations mean, isn't it? It's basically a structural entity. It's basically an intentional structure of roles. So it's a social system. Organization is a social system. It is told that family is, is our earliest organization. Head of the household, role of father, role of mother, boy, girl, right? family as a cohesive unit. Likewise, we are living in the days of organizations corporates, non-corporates. So these organizations are social systems. So if someone wishes to work in an organization or to manage the organization, it is necessary that the persons need to understand how they operate. What is the mode of operation of organizations? And these mode of operations as we all know, management in the first unit also we discuss whether management is a science or art. So in organizations also we find application of both science as well as art. So organizations combine science and people, human beings. So it has to integrate technology as well as humanity. So organizational behavior is that field of study that investigates the impact that individuals, groups, and structures find it. Three aspects I have pointed out, and that has been written in your SLM also. That is the essence of organizational behavior. Individuals, I work in an organization, I so and so. I work along with so and so in a team, and I play a role of, say, divisional manager, a zonal manager in terms of a structure. So I report to someone, someone reports to me, it's a structure. So organizational behavior is that field of study that investigates the impact that individuals, groups, and structure have on behavior within the organization. It is a study and application of knowledge about how people act within organizations. Why do people behave as they do? Why do people work as they do? What do they prefer? Why do they want to work? How best they would work? All these aspects are domain of organizational behavior. So this organizational behavior, in short, management students 
in short we call it OB. This OB covers the core topics of motivation, why people work, leadership behavior, how do the leadership right, takes place in an organization, what is the power structure, power play, interpersonal communication, group structure, team behavior, the process, learning, and how fast they unlearn, how fast do they learn, how fast do they relearn, right? attitude, motivation, perception, change, conflict, job design, stress, time management, all these aspects. Because it is basically concerned with why people behave as they do, how do people behave as they do, and how can we have better behavior, better, higher motivation, so that goals can be accomplished. That's why OB as such as a body of knowledge covers all these aspects. To that extent, we should know about the functions of management. You have already studied in your first course about the functions of management and you have already discussed some of those things. Basically, Henry Fayol, he classified the functions of management as planning, organizing, command, coordination and control. Kunjan O'Donnell, planning, organizing, staffing, leading and controlling. Luther Galik, you may have you may recall, right? Pod score, planning, organizing, directing, staffing, coordinating, reporting, budgeting. Isn't it? So whatsoever. Basically managerial functions are we need to plan, we need to organize, we need to lead, we need to coordinate, we need to staff and we need to control. So that is and in all, each and every aspect, the essence of organizational behavior is there. Historical perspectives of OB, Max Weber's bureaucratic theory of management, that part is very widely discussed in your SLM. Then Frederick Winslow Taylor's scientific management in the you know, first or second unit, we have already discussed about the father of scientific management, Frederick Winslow Taylor. Henry Fayol's admi administrative theory. Because Frederick Winslow Taylor, he popularized the scientific school of thought, whereas Henry Fayol proposed the administrative school of thought. Then we have also discussed Hawthorne studies, neoclassical theory, human relations theory. Right? These are the different, you know, the phases of evolution. In the 20th century, first half, second half, Frederick Winslow Taylor's the scientific management principles that dominated. Then came Henry Fayol. Then came Elton Mayo. Likewise, there's a Max Weber's bureaucratic theory of management, and later on Peter Drucker's theory, right? management by objectives. Not that management by objective has high implications for OB, organizational behavior. So the characteristics of Weber's bureaucracy. It's a bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is what? Basically an administrative class. There's a hierarchy. The government organizations are known to be bureaucratic organization. Means what? They are a different disciplinary functionaries are there, isn't it? Discipline-wise, function-wise, work-wise. There is division of work, there is a hierarchy, of set official rules are there. Interpersonal relationships, right? Not much of that concern, it's mostly impersonal relationship. Because the file notes, notes have to be seen, official record, height of official record maintenance. These are basically the structure of a bureaucratic organization, right? Lots of paperwork, files, classes, hierarchy, division of work. Now somebody is looking after pension, so he will not uh, see the works of provision fund. Somebody is looking after the billing of the right, different bills, so that person will not see some other functions. So it's highly divisionalized. And to our, for each and everything, there are set rules. That is bureaucratic organizations. So these are certain benefits because the rules, procedures are very well decided for every work. It leads to consistency in employees' behavior. So someone is taking care of provident fund or pension. So we'll be governed by the pension rules, we'll be governed by the provident fund rules. So there will not be two cases will not be different. Each one will be governed by the same set of rules. And the, since the employees are bound to follow these rules, so the management process becomes easy. So the only challenge for the management process is to design those rules. Then administer those rules. The duties and responsibilities of each job are clearly defined. There is no question of overlapping or any kind of conflicting job duties. 
the selection process, promotion procedures, all these are based on merit and expertise. And it assists in putting the right persons on the right jobs. So there is optimum utilization of human resources, ideally. But many times because of some of the problems of bureaucracy, we find some demerits also. So what are the disadvantages of bureaucracy? This system suffers from too much of red tape and paperwork. In government offices we have seen, suppose a particular vendor has raised a bill. So that particular vendor will raise the bill to the administrative section, administrative section will refer it to the finance section, finance section will see it, then will refer to the account section, then again will see it, send it to the administrative section, then the administrative section will take the approval, that approval will be notified to the finance section, likewise, is not it? It's a too much of stages. And because of these stages, the advantages part we have discussed, it becomes foolproof. The disadvantage is that it takes lots of time and it becomes too much of paperwork. And what happens in this type of thing, as the behavior becomes impersonal, people, employees do not develop a kind of belongingness to the organization. They just develop a belongingness to their respective workstations, their own files and all these things. They do not see the whole picture of the organization beyond that. The excessive reliance on rules and regulations, adherence to these policies, inhibit initiative. So they will not go out of the box. And that also affects the growth of the employees. As if employees are treated like machines. You see, you enter so many bills, process these bills, and at the end of the day, give the results. So it's as if they are treated like machines. They are not people treated as human beings not like individuals. I am not say not like human, not, not as individuals as such. So there is neglect of human factor. So all these aspects, right, when we study organizational behavior, all these aspects, the different perspectives come right, into full play. So basic approaches to organizational behavior is basically an interdisciplinary approach. Because we are studying human behavior, so we are studying psychology. We are studying organizational psychology, we are studying industrial psychology. Organizational psychology or industrial psychology we are studying. As because we are studying human beings, so cultural anthropology also takes importance. People, demographic related aspects, age, income, right? education. So it's basically an interdisciplinary approach. Though it is interdisciplinary, it's highly scientific. We are discussing perception, we are discussing power. All these things, right, different instruments have been developed. And all these instruments have been scientifically developed. So, at the same time, because of this, it becomes a very supportive role. It takes a very supportive role in human resource management. It's a contingency approach. Nothing is right, standardized. Nothing can be rigid. At the same time, OB is a systemic approach. It's a system-based approach. Because... It takes care of individual, it takes care of team or group and the structure. So nothing is seen in isolation. An individual cannot be seen in isolation. An individual performance will be seen in light of the performance of team or group under a leadership, under a structure. That's why it's systematic. And because of all these things, Organizational behavior is a very interesting area of study and its importance in an organization is very, very high. If we can apply the principles of organizational behavior, it will help the organization to develop better relationship by achieving people's organizations and social objectives. If the individual objectives are taken care of in an effective manner, that will help the organization. And if the organizational objectives are taken care of, that will ultimately serve the society, is not it? Because it is directed at the individual, directed at the organization, and automatically the society will get the benefit. And it covers a wide array of human resource aspects like behavior, training, motivation, sense, leadership, team behavior. And it helps in bringing in the coordination, which is the essence of management. And if it can be executed well, it will help in improving the goodwill of the organization. People will be happy. 
and that will help the organization to achieve the objectives quickly because people are searched, they are motivated. And that will help the organization to make optimum utilization of resources. That will because the, the employee workforce will be motivated, that is likely to lead to higher efficiency. And that will also help in reduction of conflict, the tensions, because that improves the relationship in the organization. And as it is multidisciplinary, so it will apply different techniques, techniques of motivation, techniques of psychology, techniques of anthropology, techniques of group behavior, even you know, statistics or money, right? the role of money as a motivator, the borrowing some principles of economics also. So it takes a multidisciplinary approach to a study of human behavior at the workplace. So that's why we need to see the relationship between management process and organizational behavior. Organizational behavior is multifaceted and most of the times the terms OB and management process are used synonymously. As we have discussed, it has got both science and art component. And that's why sometimes we may observe some minute differences between the two. Organizational behavior, organization is considered as a structure. An organization as a structure with several subsystems. Suppose financial system, marketing system, it? HR system. And all these systems, individuals and, activi and activities will be organized to achieve certain predetermined goals, which will be set in light of the overall organizational growth. So that's why we require division of labor and coordination of all these activities. So, organization is an entity. It is basically a structure. Structure of roles and positions across discipline. Whereas management refers to that functional process of accomplishing the goals of the organization. So, it will be applicable to financial system, to marketing system, to HR system, everywhere. So, it will be all pervasive. And within management, there could be top management, middle management, lower management. These are the things, different levels of management, which we all use, frequently use, to indicate the hierarchical levels of those who are engaged in the process of getting the goals accomplished. Is that it? Achieving the organizational objectives. But each and every level, the importance of OB is there. A lower level manager also has to learn the concepts of OB, likewise the top manager also. So that's why both the term management process and organizational behavior, we can say that management process is all pervasive. It applies to all. And in all those cases, achievement of the organizational objectives will depend upon to what extent we can imbibe the principles of organizational behavior. And to understand this framework of organizational behavior, as I have stated a few minutes back, the basic OB model suggests that an organization can be studied three levels. One is the individual, means the individual worker. That individual worker will work in a team, group. And that group will work in amongst the group in an organization. Individual part, individual is a part of a group. A group is a part of many groups and all those groups together cohesively, that is organization. So OB, in order to study OB, we will have to study OB at all these levels. Individual level, that individual in the context of a group, that group in the context of many groups in the organization so that they can contributely, collectively contribute towards the organization objectives. So to that extent, OB has many challenges. First of all, improving the skills of people. People's skill is very complex. Today someone is highly skilled, is highly motivated, tomorrow that person will not give the desired performance. Motivation may play, play a role. Appreciation for the work done might play a role. Compensationary benefits given to the worker might play a role. So there are different aspects associated with this. Improving quality and productivity. How much? At what cost? Output compared to input. And then managing workforce diversity. 
diversity unite no workforce every workforce has got a demographic variances someone could be senior someone could be junior someone could be male someone could be female someone could be from urban background someone could be from rural background so this despite the diversity how best we can uh, achieve the purpose of the organization then how can we empower people so that they can do on their own a culture of change because everything changes organizations have to sense they cannot resist sense innovation has to be in the life blood of an organization these aspects have to be seen moreover in today's context more especially after covid work from home new concept emergence of e organization paperless office new concept then another aspect improving the ethical behavior many of the organizations the values and ethics are at stake so how can we make our employees ethically more responsive that is another challenge for organizational behavior and then we need to see because that is the human capital organizational behavior is a term used to define the concept of behavior for individuals who constitute the human elements they are the human capital and an individual worker is a part of the human capital of an organization so this is human resource and that is used to describe management of the employees in any organization so employees will be more productive in an atmosphere where they feel they can thrive such as one where the you know the relationships are clearly defined they will feel right they will have clarity of their work part of the responsibility of human resource is to enable such an environment that's why in human resource we discuss the concept of right in your human resource related course you will find the concepts of job design job description job enlargement job empowerment and all these concepts have some kind of root some kind of relationship with organizational behavior because this is related with human motivation so within an organization how can we go for effective application of good organizational practices that is the essence of human resource management and to that extent hrm has to depend a lot on organizational behavior and another important thing in addition to e offices or e mode of work the importance of organizational behavior because nowadays in the advent of the multinational corporations the right the different global organizations transnational corporations right the workforce diversity has increased tremendously right somebody will be using a german technology will play use the place of italy and will use the market of say right some other countries but right? it's completely global and that has impacted or accentuated subsequent to globalization and the different aspects of business practices it has many dimensions so the effect of globalization or organization is an increase in right the alliances have taken place mergers have taken place right say japanese companies have got their own you know, right indian counterparts say honda motorcycle is not it kawasaki is not it so the different organizations they will be having their indian presence they will be having their pakistan presence also will be having their presence in bangladesh also so the different countries so that's why the authority control power the politics all these aspects have sense because of globalization and today because of this we have been experiencing certain changes in the structures of the organizations the traditional bureaucratic type of organization which we discuss that sometimes in many of the organizations it might have might not have any relevance suppose in cobe and globally renowned advertising agency they may not afford a bureaucratic structure they will not rather they will go for a kind of a span of organization which is wide so the breakdown of that tall hierarchy is an emerging trend so we find increasing use of teams in case of bureaucratic organizations basically we are considering individuals and specific responsibilities but here the team is given the particular responsibility and they will divide their own ways and that is another thing of managing by objectives so cross functional groups right reorganization of the functional departments 
right? Reduction in centralized control, more of empowerment to the individual employees. These are becoming some of the important trends, right? Which are affected by globalization. So as a student of organizational behavior, we need to study these aspects also. So dear learners, this globalization has changed the nature of managerial work. It requires managers to be global managers, right? Working in a globalized era. So they will require lots of judgmental power, use of persuasion, influence in cross cultural you know, cross cultural countries and the global employee. They will have to manage the global employee. So with this, we may sum up the basic learnings in learnings in this unit. Basically, we have discussed what organizational behavior is. It's a field of study that investigates the impact that individuals, groups, and structure have on the behavior within the organization. That is, that part you must remember that OB is a systematic study. It studies individual, individual in a group, that group amongst groups in an organization so that the organization can achieve the objectives of the organization in a socially desirable manner. To that extent, different schools, theories have been discussed. Different writers have provided different categorization schemes. We have discussed Henry Fayol, we have discussed uh, Frederick Winston Taylor, Elton Mayo, human relations, bureaucratic type of organization. So in order to have a kind of understanding, we can identify right, various theories, right? We have already discussed Frederick Winslow Taylor's theory, Andy Fair's theory, Horton studies, Max Weber's bureaucratic theory. All these theories, approaches, schools, categories will give up some kind of idea to look at organizational behavior. Then we need to synthesize all these approaches. And basically, after having all these things, we can conclude that organizational behavior is an interdisciplinary approach. We need to have understanding of psychology, anthropology, economics, isn't it? sociology, demographics. It's basically an interdisciplinary approach. Then we need to have an understanding of scientific management approach. OB is scientific. It is systemic, system approach. Plus, it makes sense. Say COVID example we have given, work from home, it came. So it requires a kind of contingency approach also, situational approach. So we have discussed all these things. We have discussed all these things in the context of individual, group and people. So we have also discussed this relationship in the context of human resource management as well as overall process of management. So these are basically what we have learned in this particular unit. You read the chapter, you read the SLM of unit 9, organizational behavior. It's very interesting and hope you will enjoy the reading and hope you have enjoyed the video and have learned something about organizational behavior. Thank you and wish you all the best.